My inspiration for this style was this look by Sierra as well as this look from Pinterest. So I'm going to mix those two looks together. I'm going to be using the hair from Spectra. It's uh, pre-stretched braids. I only use this one pack to complete this look. I'm going to start off with freshly washed stretched hair since I'm natural and I'm a 4B, 4C texture. It works easier for me. I hate using heat on my hair to just work with stretched hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna section my hair off, making sure that my parts are nice and clean. The front is obviously gonna be cornrowed. The back I'm gonna do knotless braids. So I'm just making sure that my parts are clean for the completed look. Now with the back part, um, I get very often, how do I get my parts so neat? I use the double mirror method where I have a mirror in front of me and a mirror behind me. So I'm using this mirror in front of me and then I'm using my bathroom mirror behind me so that I can make my parts as clean as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna rubber band the sections away and I'm gonna continue to work my way up rubber banding each section so I don't have to worry about reparting my hair. It just works best for me. Once I'm done sectioning my hair, I'm going to begin my knotless braids. I'm going to add some edge control to the base of my hair just so that my braids are a little bit cleaner. And then I'm going to begin braiding my hair. So to do knotless braids, you're just going to braid your hair just a little bit in the beginning. That's where you hide the knot and then you're going to feed in the extensions. Depending on how thick you want your braid to be, that's how much extensions you put in. Just make sure you're working with a little bit of hair at a time. That way it looks like it's literally growing out from your scalp. If you need more of a detailed tutorial, I will link a card above and at the end so you guys can see more in detail how to do knotless braids. Once I get enough hair that I want into my braid, I'm gonna go ahead and braid my hair to the end. I'm not gonna braid it all the way down. I think I, my braids are 20 inches. I'm not gonna braid it all the way down because as in the Sierra inspired look, she had it cut bluntly. So I'm just looking to just make sure it's braided to the length that I want it. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna add a rubber band to the end and then I'm gonna work on my next braid. Now here I'm gonna start measuring where I want my braid to end. I'm just looking in the mirror. I'm using that first braid as my guide. And then along the way, I'm going to make sure that all my braids line up. All right, so I'm in the process of trying to copy Sierra's, um, I was in the process, sorry, my sister just texted me. So I'm in the process of copying Sierra's hairstyle so I can record for YouTube, which I had like a ring light and a whole setup going on. And this was the first braid that I made. I'm like, oh, this is a decent length to do. And as I'm braiding my hair, I'm like, oh, look at how long this is. Guys, I have been cutting my hair this entire time because of this. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the comb and I'm just gonna make the rest of them longer because I refuse. I don't even care if it's literally a centimeter that I'm cutting. Mm -mm. The struggle. When you're trying to record and you're one hour one to come in. I'm giving you guys behind the scenes because you guys don't know what's going on on the bottom <laughs> when we do these tutorials. But as you can see, I have my toddler at the bottom of my foot. She's literally attached to me. So it's really hard for me to um, do tutorials nowadays. But I decided to stop braiding the back of my hair because the sun was setting and I just didn't know how late I was going to be up doing my hair since I have to stop continuously with her around me. So I worked my way um, to the front and as you can see, the back still needs to be completed. But anyway, I'm gonna use this edge, edge booster um, stick to help with my parting and to make my braids look a little bit neater. And then some edge control just on the parts. Now, when it comes to braiding my hair, 
I'm actually gonna braid my natural hair first. I'm gonna cornrow it all the way to the back instead of feeding extensions in right away into my cornrow. So I'm gonna cornrow my hair all the way back and then once my hair is no longer um, touching the scalp and it starts to come into an individual braid, that's when I'm gonna add the extensions onto my hair. If you guys need a tutorial on how to do the feed it method in your cornrows, I will link one of my um, popular videos in the card above and in the card at the end so you guys can see how I do the feed it method in my cornrows. Now my edges are very precious to me and I don't like to have any tension there. So when it comes to braiding my edges, since it's pretty short, um, I usually twist my hair first and then I go into a cornrow. And I'm just repeating the same method of cornrowing my hair first and then adding the extensions after. I also have my iPad sitting on my bathroom counter as a guide because I told you guys I was using um, both the Ciara picture for the length and then also the Pinterest picture for the braid pattern in the front. So I'm using that as my guide as I'm braiding my hair. So now that I have this part done, now it's time to do the swoop de swoop part. Using my um, end of my rat tail comb to do my swoops, I feel like the end of the rat tail comb gives me more of a accurate part than um, using the actual uh, cones of the comb. And I'm just gonna continue on with the same braid pattern, braiding my hair first, and then once I get towards the edge of the cornrow, then adding in my extensions. So I had to put my daughter to sleep, but after she went to sleep, I went ahead and continued on with the remaining part of my hair. As you can see, I'm braiding, I'm parting my hair on top of the braid below. That's the best method to do when it comes to um, doing box braids, whether it's on your hair or your client's hair, just make sure you're parting on top of the braid below and not following the same parts as the braid below. That way your braids can fall in between the parts and it just looks more professional that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue to do uh, the knotless braids until I am done. Off camera, which I didn't get a chance to show you guys, um, my hair is rubber band to kind of where I wanted it to, to end on the bottom. And then I did ask my husband to go ahead and cut it for me, try to make it as even as possible so that, since I couldn't see the back of my head. So that was off camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil to my scalp. I'm gonna be using some Haitian castor oil to my hair. I do sell that on my website, so I will link it below, um, hairdelacreme.com. Um, I like Haitian castor oil in my hair. The only thing I don't like is the smell, but I feel like that helped contribute to the growth of my hair. Sometimes I like to mix the um, Haitian castor oil with Jamaican black castor oil. Um, I just experiment a lot, but just using um, pure Haitian castor oil has helped with the growth of my hair. I'm gonna add some mousse just to tame my flyaways down and tie my hair down for the night so that it can set and I can give you guys the end results. So here's the final look guys. I personally don't like my edges slicked down. If you wanna add your baby hairs and slick your edges down, you can. I'm showing you guys how the back looks. I like this look. I feel like it looks like it's my hair. Um, I actually braided my hair because I had my myomectomy and I needed just a simple hairstyle. And I got so many compliments when I was in the hospital. It was just crazy. Um, but this is the final look guys. If you have any questions, you can leave them below. Comments, I love to respond to comments and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Thank you.